When you make a wrong turn, your navigation system recalculates your position, flashes a spinning wheel on the screen, and announces. Rerouting. The same thing happens to us in life all the time. We make a wrong turn or we're forced to make an unexpected detour. The good news is that God is better than our GPS at reroute. So grab your Bibles and get comfy in your passenger's chair as we unpack a life principle that has the power to put us back on the path to a God-preferred future. How's everybody? Can I get a burr from this crowd on the count of three? Ready? One, two, three. Yeah, in case you're tuning in from Arizona or California or some other place warm, high is 12 degrees in St. Louis, Missouri. Put that on your brochure for Chamber of Commerce, I dare you. Uh, welcome, my name is Keith, I'm glad you're here. If you're watching on the internet and I should happen to freeze, it's probably not your browser, I've probably actually frozen. And uh, for you guys who have made it through the weather to get to us on the East Campus, welcome. We're glad you guys are all here. Welcome to Morning Star Church. My name is Keith. I'm one of the pastors here. Uh, how many of you guys who are married have been married for less than 10 years? Just raise your hand. Yeah, you guys don't know what it means. You, you, you got nothing, and I'll tell you the reason why. You've never had the road trip with your wife without a GPS. Older couples, can I get an amen? amen? Yeah. There is nothing like getting in behind the wheel and handing the map to the wife and letting the marital bliss begin, right? Uh, I can remember I, I rode with my grandparents, Floyd and Aretha. I, I, I rode with them twice from here to Washington, D.C., and my grandfather was really proud of his AAA membership, you know? And so he'd flash that card every chance he got, but he would always call them and ask them for the trip tick. Do anybody know what I'm talking about? Nobody. None, all the, only the old folks know the trip tick, all right? And it was this big map with a spiral thing, and it would go for about 200 miles. You'd flip it. And uh, he, Floyd, hand that over to Aretha. Uh, Marco Polo did not have this many maps to get from one place to another. My grandparents did. They made it through all right. Uh, before I took this job, when I was destitute, um, I was uh, preaching in a pulpit all around. Like, I was in a different pulpit all, every Sunday. And they would give me crazy directions, you know. And uh, my thing was, no, I know where I'm going. And Laura Lisa's thing was always, you know, we really should just stop and ask. Somebody, you know, somebody knows where you want to go. And uh, one particular Sunday, it was about 20 minutes to service. All right, and I just knew that the people at the church were freaking out because the preacher wasn't there yet. And so I finally broke down like, okay, we're gonna ask somebody. This was in Southeast Missouri. Yeah, you never get anybody to go, woo, South Lake. Nobody wants you to know that that's where they're from. But uh, yeah, South, you know who you are. And uh, I'm driving along, and here's this dude in overalls. I'm not making this up, but he's in overalls. And so I stop and say, hey, we're looking, could you help us? We're looking for this church. And uh, he says, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good church, good church. And I'm like, uh, yeah, well, in fact, I'm preaching there, and the service is, you know, less than 20 minutes. We're, we're just trying to, trying to find it. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, my grandkids got baptized there. And <laughs> finally, like, tick-tock, come on. Finally, he tells me, here's the directions we got. You go on down this road for about a mile and a half to the second gravel road, turn left. Go down there about a half a mile to where the sign to the church used to be and turn left. So as we pull away, I'm saying to Laura Lee, like, this is why you don't stop. You just keep going. But lo and behold, when we got there, about a half mile down the road, there was the frame of the sign without the sign in it. The dude was right. Now Laura Lee is like, see, I told you, this is why somebody out there knows and you got to do it. Hey, if you're just joining us, over the last couple of weeks, we've been doing this uh, message series called Rerouting, which is what you get on your GPS, or at least what I get, because I always like, you know, I'm supposed to turn right here? No, I don't think so. And you go, rerouting, rerouting, I'm going to get you a new route until I finally get you where you're going, right? And so last week, Pastor Mike talked about, or, or two weeks ago, Pastor Mike talked about the principle of the path, which is direction, not intention, determines destination. Now, a principle isn't a law. 
and it's not a rule. Rules are made to be broken. A principle is one of those things that's there no matter what. Even if you don't believe it, even if you think you have your own set of facts, you know, it's like gravity. What goes up must come down, but I don't believe that. Well, okay, but it still happens, right? And so when it comes to this principle, you can choose to believe it or not, but it's still there no matter what. 100% of the time, direction, not intentions. I could want to go that way all I want, but if I'm headed that way, that's where I'm going to end up, right? Last week, he talked about how lives are connected, He said that the foolish people live as if life is disconnected, that the decisions that I make today, the choices that I make in my life, don't have anything to do with where I'm going to end up. He says the wise people realize that today's decision impact tomorrow's destination. And so today I've got a very simple message for you, uh, and it's the third in this series, and if you couldn't figure it out by the opening illustration, it's this. There's somebody... Who knows? And so if you have your Bibles with you today, I would like you to turn with me to the the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings is in the Old Testament. It's relatively easy to find. It's up towards the beginning. For those of you who are taking the How to Study Your Bible class, this is a history book. So it's at the very beginning of your Bible. So Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 and 2 Samuel, there you are, 1 and 2 Kings. You found it. And I just know that because they taught me the song in Bible school. Okay, that's how I know that. But go ahead, turn there. We're going to 1 Kings chapter 12. While you're heading there, let me just show you. I'm going to introduce you to this guy named Rehoboam. Rehoboam is in line to be king of Israel. And most of these names you guys already know, right? Saul, if you guys remember uh, David and Goliath, you remember that story? And before David goes out to fight the giant, the king is there, and he tries to put his armor on David, and it doesn't fit. You guys remember? Yes, yes. Okay, good. That's, That's Saul. And then the next one is David. David is the little shepherd boy who grows up to be king and writes many of the Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. His son is Solomon. Solomon is known as one of the wisest men who ever lived and one of the greatest kings. In fact, Solomon was the one who built the great temple of Jerusalem and everything that went around it. Solomon, although there was a great deal of slave labor and oppression going on here and high taxes for the people, Solomon was a beloved king because Solomon was able to get people on the right side. He was able to recognize, get them to recognize the vision that they, he, he and the people together were going to make Israel the greatest nation that's ever stood and with some of the greatest buildings ever. And so the people really loved him and the, the, the nation thrived under him. Now it's time for us to pass. And, and just so you know, this is the destination. Here's where Rehoboam wants to end up. He wants to be just like his forefathers and he wants to be the ruler over all 12 tribes of Israel. Let's see what he does to get there, okay? You, get, you find it in your Bible? 1 Kings chapter 12, we'll start with verse 4. Rehoboam is poised to be the king. Your father put a heavy yoke on us. Oh, I'm sorry, I should say this. The people come, before he's anointed as king, the people come before Rehoboam, and they ask him this question. Here's the question. They say, your father put a heavy yoke on us. We built, we worked, uh, but now lighten the harsh labor and the heavy yoke he put on us, and we will serve you. And Rehoboam answered, go away for three days, and then come back to me, and that's what they did. They went away. Now, Rehoboam starts out with two great decisions. Here's his first decision. First decision is slow down and think. Now, when I teach uh, decision-making in the life skill classes, one of the steps of making a decision is the, the, you ask yourself the question, does this decision need to be made right now? Many is the time that we rush into answering questions or rush into making decisions because we've put a false sense of urgency on ourselves. Like this has to be happened now, has to be made now. Uh, When many is the time, no, we got plenty of time. Let's sit, let's think, let's get some advice, let's do some reading, let's do some research. Uh, uh, The proverb says, desire without knowledge is not good. Let that soak in for a minute. I want to do something, but I don't know how, so that's not good. Desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? Haste makes waste. That's what this is. Now, can I just tell you something real quick? These are Proverbs. Proverbs were written by Solomon. 
All right, so Rehoboam's father is written all this great wisdom, and the son is like, Psh, you know, whatever. Can I get an amen from the fathers? Right? <laughs> We know how this works, okay? And so first, uh, first good decision that he makes is to slow down and think. Here's the second one. Second one was to seek good advice. Verse 6. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who had served his father Solomon during his lifetime. And he asked them, how would you advise me to answer these people? Now, great move. Right? Not only is he looking for advice, but look who he goes to for the advice. These people have all the history. They know the players that are involved in this decision that's about to be made. They have chips in their pocket. You guys know what that means? Like they've done so much good or they've done so many favors for the people that the people trust them. And so Rehoboam goes to them. And by the way, uh, not only does he, is that a good decision for all those reasons, but beyond that, these guys have what we would call today political cover, right? Right? If I do what your elders tell me to do and it doesn't go right, I can always say, hey, this, your elders are the ones who told me to go there, right? This is a great plan. However, uh, they replied, here's their reply. If today you will be a servant to these people and serve them and give them a favorable answer, then they will always be your servants. Remember where Rehoboam wanted to end up? The advice he's getting from these guys is, look, you want to be that king that rules over the whole nation? And this is what you do. You take the heavy yoke off of them, and they will serve you forever. Now, not only am I going to teach principles today, we're going to teach axioms, all right? And I looked this up to make sure I knew what it means. An axiom is a statement that is a self-evident truth, like um, count your pennies and your dollars will add up. Right? Okay? So that's an axiom. Here's several axioms we're going to go through today. Here's the first, first rerouting axiom. Don't ask for the advice you want to hear. Ask for what you need to hear. Now, we call this advice shopping. Does that make sense? I'm walking around, I'm asking people for advice, and I'm not going to stop getting advice until I hear what I wanted to hear and go, yeah, you're right. That's the smart way to go right there. That's advice shopping. Solomon, the dad, says this, the way of the fool seems right to them. I'm shopping around until I find what I, what I want to hear because that seems right to me. But the wise listen to advice. Now here, look what Rehoboam does. Listening for your own ideas. Here's what he did. But Rehoboam rejected the advice of the elders, and, and he consulted the young men who had grown up with him and were serving him. So you know what we got here? We got ourselves an entourage, right? We got a squad, right? These guys, they pal around together. They're together, and so he goes to them. Let me hear from my boys on what they have to say. And look how he asked the question. He says, how should we? Remember, he asked the elders, how would you... But now it's not like I'm the king. I'm going to get with my entourage. I'm going to get with my guys, and I'm going to find out how we should answer these people who say to me, lighten the yoke of your father that your father has put on us. All right, here's the rerouting axiom number two. When you hear only what you want to hear, you end up where you don't want to be, right? Right? This is kind of the thing that, you know, when I got into management in the theme park business, one of the older managers said to me, now you got to be careful now because your jokes all of a sudden are going to be much funnier. <laughs> you understand what he was saying to me? He's saying, look, because all these people are paid to be here and now you're their boss, all of a sudden, like everything you say is going to be, yes, boss, right, boss, funny, boss, that's good, boss. you got to be careful about that. When you hear only what you want to hear, you end up where you don't want to be. Now, this is the verse that Pastor Mike preached on last week. The prudent see danger and take refuge. I recognize there's something coming, I duck, right? But the simple keep going, do, 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 and pay the penalty, right? All right, that, you, you can go back and get that if you didn't get it last week. All right, so here's Rehoboam. Doing only what you want to do. The young men who had grown up with him replied, These people have said to, your father, to, to you, Your father put a heavy yoke on us, but make your, our yoke lighter. Now tell them, My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Now historians will tell you that Solomon was well fed. 
fact, back in his day, fat was a good thing. Like that showed that you were royal. That showed that you could eat any time you wanted to. And they're saying, so when they said to the people, hey, you you remember my father? Yeah, my little finger is bigger than his waist. They go, "Uh uh-oh. My father laid on you a heavy yoke. I'm going to make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. Scorpions are whips that have metal pieces on the end. So not only do you get beat by it, but it rips the skin away when you pull away from them. Their Their advice is, go in and tell them you're the man all right here's the rerouting axiom number three when you do only what you want to do you usually end up where you don't want to be now we know this is right right we know this axiom is true I mean if we eat only the foods that we like how do we end up If we exercise only in times when we want to, or if we only do the things that we really like to do at the gym, right? We don't do all the hard stuff, where do we end up? It's the same for employees, right? If we only work at the things that we really like to do, then what happens? All the real work piles up, doesn't it? In fact, we have a saying around here with our staff uh, here at Morningstar, and that is, that's why they call it work. Right? Because if you only do what you're passionate about doing, if you're only doing what you love to do, what happens is it piles up, it piles up, and nothing, and we never get to where we want to go. You want to get to where you're going to go? It's going to take you doing some things that you don't want to do. You hear me? Now, here's one of the most famous proverbs from Solomon, all right? Here's the dad. He's trying to talk, right? The, the guy's not listening, but here's what he says. This is very famous. Maybe you know this one. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding, but in all things acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. What's the closest distance between two points? Straight line. You want to get to where you're going quickest? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And don't lean on your own understanding, but in all things acknowledge him, and he'll make straight your path. You starting to get it? All right, well, here, going down the wrong path, here's what Rehoboam did. Oh, wow, we golly, let's get back. <laughs> let's see here. Yeah, yeah. This is the best rehearsal we've ever had. And man, you hit one bucket button and they'll put you in the wrong spot. There you are. He's going down the wrong path, verse 12. I'm just the associate here. All right? What are they going to do? Promotion, yeah. Three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to Rehoboam, as the king had said, and they said, come back to, he had said, come back to me in three days. And the king answered the people harshly, rejecting the advice given him by the elders. He followed the advice of his entourage, the younger men. Um, When all Israel saw that the king refused to listen to them, they answered the king, what share do we have in David? What part of Jesse's son? See what they're saying? When Solomon, even though he was tough on him, even though the taxes were high, even though he was oppressing slaves to make all this work happen all around them, uh, they still bought into the vision of what he was doing. And they had a peace in the house of David. They knew what was good for him was good for them. It was a win-win situation. Now they see this and they ask the question, well, wait a minute. This seems like a win for you and a real big loss for us. What's in it for us? And then they say this, to your tents, Israel. In other words, every man for himself. Look after your own house, David. I love that. Like on their way out the door, they turn around and they call Rehoboam after his grandpa and they go, hey, look after your own house. You're on your own. And so the Israelites went home. All right, so let me go back. You remember where Rehoboam wanted to end up? His desired destination was this, right? He wanted to be in the line of the great kings that ran the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, had he listened to the advice of the elders that were, uh, that were placed in authority in his life, this probably is where he would have ended up. But he didn't. And here's where he ends up, right? This is the great divide of the Israel nation. Maybe you've heard of this. In fact, this never got sewed back together until the 20th century, 
Okay, so this is a major decision that goes wrong. Uh, Jeroboam, who you, you, you kind of saw peripherally in the last verse, uh, is, is elected king over ten of the tribes, the northern tribes of Israel. In fact, this is when they began to call themselves, they changed their name, called themselves Israel. And Rehoboam has just his tribe, Judah, and one other tribe, the smallest and weakest of all the twelve tribes, Benjamin. And so where does he end up? right where he doesn't want to be, in charge of really what he already had and nowhere close. And in fact, this begins the downhill cycle, right, of all that Israel was. Um, Here's the fourth axiom. Somebody knows how to get where you want to be. Solomon said, the way of the fool seems right to them, but wise listen to advice. There's somebody out there who knows how to get to where you want to be. It comes down to when you start to determine, well, this is what I want, look around you. Find somebody else who's already there and go ask them this question. If you were me, what would you do to get where you are? Man, you're going to get, most of the time, nine times out of ten, you're going to get great advice. People will pour into you, well, that's a great question. Let me just say, this is what I've learned. Here's what I've come to, come to, these are the conclusions I've come to through my journey to get here. And if I were you, I'd do this, this, and this. And it's not advice shopping. Don't go looking for somebody who's telling you what you want to hear. Go to people who, who have no stake in it, who are just going to give you the honest truth. Uh, before Laura Lee and I went and launched the church in the downtown area, uh, I, I actually was in Pastor Jennifer's position here. I was the missions pastor. And I was in this conference with all these mission pastors. And uh, uh, it was one of those conferences where you talked and then you went down to the tables and you discuss and then a little bit more. And, they, and the people who were leading the conference said, okay, look, every time that we break, when you come back into the room, I want you to sit at a different table. This way you'll meet more mission pastors, get more ideas, get other things like that. Well, you know me, so I'm at the first table. Table, and uh, there's this lady from Mansfield, Texas, First United uh, Methodist Church in Mansfield, Texas, and she started talking about this thing that they called a resource center. And it sounded really good. I mean, it sounded like, wow, that's exactly what we've been trying to figure out here. That sounds great. So I listened to her and went, wow, this is the, what a great idea. Well, at the break, I waited. I watched where she went. Whatever table she went to, I'd go sit with. I stalked her. I, that's what I did. About three or four breaks in, you know, finally I just said, look, let, let me just say, I'm from this church, very similar demographic to where you're from, and uh, we've been struggling with how to focus our energy and how to, how to really bless the people in our community, and this thing of yours sounds so great. Boy, I'd love to hear more about it. And she started talking. We had lunch together. She started telling me about it. I said, could I ask you? Boy, we would love, I'd love to bring my best volunteers. Could we come down and see the operation? Absolutely. And man, they opened up the doors. They handed away everything that they had. In fact, one of our our original uh, director of that resource center that we have right here on our property was on that trip with us. Her and, and Pastor Teresa from Mansfield, Texas became good friends. She opened up the floodgate. She gave us everything. And by the way, that is today what we call our beacon of love. It's been blessing families all through our community, right? It's our own resource center right over here on the other side of the parking lot was somebody else's idea, we're proud to say. But we were smart enough to say, hey, if, if, if you were us, what would you do? And I remember one of the things that she said was, you know, you just got to get started. You just got to get rolling. And about two months later, I was in Kansas City and I was meeting an investor, a guy who invests in a lot of 501c3 charities. And I told him about this idea we had for the resource center. And he said, Keith, if I were you, I wouldn't wait until you had a building. In fact, what I would do is I'd start doing the work of the resource center right now. You'll get a building. It'll come along. But just start doing the work. And some of you are here in this room. But we had care counselors back in the day who would carry a card table and a file cabinet, right? A little file book. And they'd walk into the nurseries, set up their little card table. And that's where we started the resource center because of advice that we had heard from other people. So 
Here's some advice that I have for you as a follower of Jesus. Here's four things. First, reach out to somebody who knows. There is somebody who's already in your life who knows how to get to where you are, and you just haven't asked them. Go find them, ask them that question. Don't listen to what you want to hear. Be willing to do what you don't want to do. You remember the axioms, right? Recognize that if you're going to get where you're going, you're going to have to do some things that you don't want to do, right? And then the last one, give your kids some good advice. Can I just, just for a second, uh, we've been talking about Rehoboam the son and Solomon the father, and Solomon's given all this great wisdom, and Rehoboam isn't listening at all, right? I can relate to that. My father has five PhDs, never listen to him, right? <laughs> right? After, a little, after I got to become an adult, I was like, boy, I wonder how dad got so smart in the last few years. That's pretty good. And so dads, can I just talk to you, or really, anybody who's raising kids, moms, single moms, uh, grandparents, uh, but, but, but dads, we were talking about Solomon and Rehoboam, let me just talk to the dads. Uh, my kids are raised. Here's the advice I would give you. If I were raising kids in the 21st century, I would recognize that many of the things that I say to them that they never listen to. It's great wisdom, they don't listen to it. And so I'd make, it, I'd make an effort to be putting my kids in places where they're hearing the same things that I would tell them and so that they're being poured into by total strangers who have their best interest at heart. And can I just pitch it? It's right, you're sitting in it, right? I mean, listen, if I were you, I would make sure my kids were here every time they opened the doors. You know how many times that I've had parents tell me, I've told her that a thousand times, and then Haley told it to her once, and she got it. There it is. That's what we're in business for. We have people who are working, some of them are full-time employees who are doing nothing more than working really hard for the weekend to pour into your kids and give them the messages of God and the Bible, right? And so that's why if I were you, I'd be, man, every time they open the doors, I'd have them here. And kids, if you're in this room, let me just say, I wouldn't put them in here either. Sitting in here playing on their phone and doing much for them. Can I just get a witness on that, right? I'd put them back there where the message is. And I had one mom say, well, he, he just doesn't want to go. I'm like, duh. Of course he doesn't want to go. You know how many times my, I told my mom I didn't want to go someplace? She went, oh, okay, I'm going, right? <laughs> to this day, if she pointed, I'd yeah, okay, I'm going, right? <laughs> right? Listen, our kid, this is so important, man. This is a, this is a choice that you're making right now. And if I were you, I'd be putting my kids there every chance I got. And let me just say, if it's good for the kids, how much more is it for your spiritual journey? If you found yourself putting yourself in the place where you're able to listen to what God is speaking to you every single week, man, I'd be finding ways to get here twice a week, three times a week. I'd be working on it if I were you. Um, after all, Plans fail for lack of counsel. But with many advisors, they succeed. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you. Thank you that in my life, uh, the number of times that I just blew off the advisors that you put in my path, the number of times that you, um, you yourself were laying out the path for my life that I just completely ignored. Um, and yet you've been so faithful. You have stuck with us, and you have given us this sense of your presence even when we continue to fail. Your word says that you demonstrate your love with us in that while we're sinners, in our sin, you sent your son to die for us. Father, I pray that in this room, all across this place, that your spirit would uh, invade the people in this room. And more than that, the people in our East Campus, God, I pray you would invade their lives. And more than that, the friends of ours who are tuning in on the Internet today, I pray that th through your supernatural power, wherever they have heard this message, may it fall on uh, good ears. And may they soak it in, recognizing that you're working in our lives and you want us to succeed. God, give us the strength we need to seek the advice and the advisors that you've put in our path that we might be able to do what we don't want to do in order to be where you want us to go. 
In Christ's name we pray. Amen? Amen.